Cleaning African Muzzle Odors, William Hovey Smith, 2015. Now this video was sh actually shot in South Africa after my 2007 hunt, and it describes the three guns I used to take five species of planes game. Now I later wrote about this in my book Extreme Muzzle Loading, as well as others of my muzzle loading e-books. The first thing you do, obviously, is disassemble the gun. Then you wash the barrel to remove the corrosive combustion salts of black powder. Then dry, oil, lubricate, and reassemble. So that's basically it. We'll start with the Thompson Center Encore pistol, this one. It just finished off a wildebeest, so it's empty. But the first thing you do with any gun is to check and see if there's a charge in it. Simply done, putting the ramrod down the barrel, goes all the way in, no charge present. The next operation is to disassemble the gun. With the Encore, you remove the forend just like you would the forend of a single barrel shotgun. Two screws. Four in comes off. Then there is a pin there. Tap out the pin. Now you have the barrel free from the gun. This is an inline handgun. The primer fits in here. And it's in line in the sense that the ignition passage is all in a straight line, rather than a side lock, where the ignition passage will commonly have a right angle turn. The next thing required is to remove the extractor. So we need a little screwdriver for that. Screw out, extractor is removed. Following that, you remove the breech plug. Nowadays, many makers use hexagonal breech plugs and have similar fittings. As you see, it screws out very easily. And the breech plug goes in a pail of soap and water. Okay. Now barrel cleaning. There are many commercial solutions that one can use to clean black powder guns, but nothing yet works any better than soapy water made up with a small amount of dishwashing detergent. That's all you need and can get it anywhere in the world. Take a patch. Uh, yay. Put your barrel down in the water. Wet patch. Put on breech and push down through the barrel. Then you work that back and forth to get actually water up into the barrel. That patch is a little, a little loose, but it's doing the job. You can see the patch is dirty. It's white when it went in. So it's removing stuff from in the inside. We use a little larger patch. And to go through the same operation. So we're sure we get everything out of the uh, out of the lands and grooves.
This pumping action forces water through all the barrel. And that's exactly what you want to happen to dissolve all the black powder residue. Now, the barrel is wet. We superficially dry it a little bit. A common question at about this stage is, well, why don't you just use gun oil? Well, the fact is that gun oil will not dissolve black powder corrosion products. They are soluble in water, but they are not soluble in oil. So you can get something superficially clean with gun oil and have the gun rust up instantly thereafter. But with soap and water, if you clean and dry, then you'll have a good, and lubricate, then you'll have a good result. The breech area is a little larger in diameter than the barrel. So it takes a little extra care to get it clean and dry. Now what we're doing is just drying the excess water out of the barrel. You see the patch is coming out practically spotless now. There's very little on it. Now mind you, at this stage, all we've used is soapy water. Okay, that's getting about where we want it. About one more dry, drying patch, and that'll do it. When I'm at home and I have access to a, a heating stove, I'll actually stick my barrels on top of the stove and just let them get hot to the touch. And that ensures that absolutely all the moisture is gone. Okay, looks crystal clear. Now it's ready for some lubricant. And what I'm using is Thompson Center's bore butter which is a black powder lubricant and may also be used to lubricate bullets. It has some cleaning properties as well, so it works for both uses. Barrels lubricating. No wipe down generally. We have one clean barrel. Now, what about the frame? The Thompson Center frame is as near combustion products tight as can be. So there's no need to take this action apart or do anything other than merely wipe the frame down. Okay, that's done. Now, 
There are a few little vital components left. The hinge pin and most importantly the breech plug which has been soaking here for a while. Just wipe it down. Wipe it off. As you can see, there are some combustion products on the inside. Remove those. The triple seven powder here cleans up very easily. It has grease on these threads. I go ahead and remove all the old grease off the threads anyway, just to make sure we get everything. There's a very small ignition passage here, and so we're going to put a rag down that. Okay. Again, wipe it off just once more just to make sure everything's thoroughly dry. You witnessed how easy the breech plug was to take out. Well, that wasn't accidental. You need a special high temperature grease to put on the group on the breech plug and here is some that happens to be made by a knight but there are uh, many others available but what you want on this breech plug is a dab of high temperature grease like so make sure you get some down at the start of the threads Screw back into the barrel. As you see, it goes in very easily. Don't need tremendous force. And it's fine threaded. Just tighten up snug. That's all. Now your breech plug is there. Now we have the extractor to reinstall. The only tricky part is getting the small screw started back in. So now the barrel is cleaned, ready to go back on the frame. Barrel pin.
Now one thing don't forget is that your ramrod is dirty too. So it just needs a quick rinse, both ends. Simple wipe down. Assemble. And the gun is clean. As you recall, the first thing I said we did when cleaning a gun was make sure that it wasn't loaded. Lo and behold, this gun is still loaded. I know that. So we must unload the gun. There are two ways to do it. One, obviously, is to shoot it. But the modern inline can be unloaded without being fired and without drawing the charge out in this direction. It's a very simple process. First, the bolt is removed. like this. Then the breech plug is removed. Like so. Then two power deck or two pellets, two triple seven pellets, the powder charge is just falling out of the bore. And you remove the bullet by pushing the bullet forward out of the bore. There's the third powder charge and the projectile. Could you reuse these components? Yes, you could. Since we're going to put the gun away, we'll just run an oily patch down the bore. So, since the gun was not fired and the breech plug was already clean, well, it did fire a cap, so we'll go ahead and re-clean the breech plug anyway. It looks a little, looks a little dirty, that won't take long.
what I'm doing here is I'm using progressively drier cloths to make sure we get all the water off of it. Okay. One clean breech plug. Night lubricant. Breech plug grease. As before. Start that back into the breech. Screw it down. Finger tight. Cinch with a wrench. Reinsert the bolt. Reinsert the screw. Tighten it with the Allen wrench. Check for function. And that's it. Traditional side hammer muzzle loaders, such as this double barrel shotgun, are a little more difficult to clean than the modern inlines. They have more components and are generally more delicate in their construction. So there are many more small pieces that might be lost and mislaid. So the first thing you need to do is to find you a place where you can lay your components out and make sure you can keep up with them. Right now I'm the nearest place I will probably be to darkest Africa in South Africa. Even so, you don't want to lose any parts. Again, we check and make sure the muzzle loader is unloaded. Both barrels unload, unloaded. With a charge, the ramrod would extend out approximately that far. So we disassemble the gun. This gun is held together with a bower wedge here. So we'll cock the hammers, get those out of the way. Push the barrel wedge through, pull it with the fingers, now the barrels lift off the gun. Very simple disassembly. Doubles like this in either rifle or shotgun version are very easy to transport because you can disassemble a double and put it in an ordinary piece of luggage without needing a gun case. The next thing that is done is that the nipples are removed with a little nipple wrench. You'll notice they screw out relatively easy. This is because although we have fired perhaps eight shots with this gun, they were well greased before they were put in. Then we place the nipples in water and let them soak. The locks don't have to be cleaned every time you shoot. What does have to be cleaned are the hammer mechanisms because this is where your black powder fouling comes. It comes here, here, and here. So we'll take the locks off now. Need a smaller screwdriver. 
Remove the screws from the wood. One. Two. Relax the tension on the hammers. And then take out the screw that actually connects the two locks. You can see how well machined and pretty these locks are. These are very nice, high quality percussion locks. The next thing to be removed is this breech here. There are two smaller screws in the rear. and one larger screw here. Now this is free. This can be removed and it also goes in the water. There's no need to remove the trigger guard or the trigger guard mechanism because this received no filing from black powder. And this removes all the metallic parts from the stock except for the trigger guard and the triggers. And there's no reason to remove these because they received no filing from black powder. So we'll need to start cleaning on the smaller components here. As you see, I Put it in water. I sort of rub it off with the fingers good. Rinse it. Soapy water. And just dry and rub it. And that's all that's necessary. If it's really severe, you can use a brush. Something like an old toothbrush is ideal. You want to make sure you get all the filing from the shield area here where it typically connects. And once this has been wiped dry, it can be set aside. Now, you remember we had the two little nipples. And here they are. These nipples are important, and it's good to check the condition of them. Years ago, some nipples were made that were made of very hard steel and were brittle and would actually tend to crack. But modern nipples are made of better materials and hold together very well with use. So just dry the nipples on the outside.
That being accomplished, take a piece of tissue, twirl it up very small, and run it in the nipple channels. Almost like threading a needle. And this removes the water from the inside. Before you reload the gun, you'll also fire a cap on these nipples just to make sure that all the water and oil is are gone. That's one. Two. Now the nipples can be set aside. On the locks themselves, periodically, I thoroughly wash and clean and disassemble the locks, but there's no reason to do that in most circumstances. Oftentimes, all that's necessary is you just dip the lock in water just to cover the hammer, just to that point. And that removes and dissolves the corrosion products from the hammer and shake it dry. You dry the hammer. And clean the inside here. You can see the black powder filing. If one were using Pyrodex powder, you would have a little less fouling, but you would still need to go through this exercise. Also with this hammer. The same procedure exactly. And those can be set aside. Now what remains is a barrel. If you look, you can see how the combustion products have coated several inches of the barrel here. So we just place the whole rear end in the water, wet those, put them on the bristle brush, and go down the bore. What I'm seeing in the water below me is plastic residue from the, from the wads we were using being physically washed out of the barrel. That's one barrel. And that's the second. Just going to reverse the rag and do the same thing again. We're going to put on a clean patch and now we're going to rinse it. Go in the clean water now. Run more of it back up and down the bore. If 
that siphoning noise that you hear is actually bringing a column of water up the barrel. And that's exactly what you want to have happen. Water off. Patches. See if that is too tight. Maybe. Nope, just right. The reason I'm doing this is that the breech is not absolutely flat at the back. Okay. One side. Then the other. Now water has collected back where the nipples screw in. Just knocked out the excess. excess. And wipe off the exterior. Then with our tissue paper again. Put a twist down in the nipple itself. Yay. Now we put on another dry patch. washed and dried and all that remains is to relubricate and reassemble. And we use it to wipe down the inside and the outside of the barrels, the locks, and all the other components. I'm rolling it just to make sure it's fully distributed throughout the, the wiping materials rather than just stuck in a clump. Lubricate the inside of the bores. Wipe them a little bit. Apply a dab of grease. What you do is you do not want to force your, your nipples into the threads. If you do, it's very easy to cross thread them and then the nipples lose all their strength to retain the forces of combustion. Place it in the stock. Now we'll put these aside. Wipe down the locks. When replacing the locks, you have to make sure that you're holding your triggers back so that this sear will clear the trigger blade. So that's what I'm doing now. We're inserting the lock here, and it should fit flushly without any problem. Place the wood screw. 
pulling down the trigger so the seal bar will clear. Dropping it in the wood. You heard it sort of click as it nestled in. Nice wood screw. The through bolt. Hammers the half cock. Take the barrels. Okay. Now we have the ramrod. So we just wipe the ramrod. Insert it back in the ramrod channel. Test the locks. And the gun is clean and ready to go. I cover muzzle loading in my best known book, Backyard Deer Hunting, but of course feature them in extreme muzzle loading as well as an eight book ebook series. Now, published among these books right now are Shooting and Maintaining Your Muzzle Loader, Hunting with Muzzle Loading Shotguns and Smoothbore Muskets, Hunting Big and Small Game with Muzzle Loading Pistols, and Muzzle Loaders for Hunters, all of which have extracts of these African hunts. Now, this was shot on location at 2007 at Spear Safaris Camp. Now, the Dysons are still very much in the safari business, and you can contact them at www.spearsafari.com. For more information on my books, blogs, and nearly 450 videos, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.